Good evening and welcome along to another edition of Added Time, the football show and the football podcast you never knew you needed. Thanks to our sponsors, AO Home Improvements, your one-stop shop for all your renovation and projects around the home. So go online and give them a check out, guys. Give them a call. Um, obviously, week two of the podcast, and if you haven't already done so, if you can get on a YouTube and subscribe to the Let's Have It uh, channel and get all great content like Talking Gash, Sip Tea, Scheme Dreams, and obviously our new, brand new dating show, uh, Finders, Keep- Find- Finders Keepers, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, um, tonight we'll be talking about the four-way title race down in England. We'll be talking about, obviously, the Scottish Premiership at the weekend and just reviewing and previewing all the football from the week that's just passed. Um, tonight, my guests are star of TikTok and massive Celtic fan, John Tierney, and formerly of PLZ, we've got football pundit, journalist, reporter, Ed. Uh, Adam, Benny, so welcome along, guys. Thanks for having us. Cheers. No worries. Um, so obviously I like to throw my quiz into the guys as well, uh, midway, so I don't know how much football knowledge you've got, but we're going to find out later on in the show. Up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't prepare, sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So the only place we can start, obviously, is uh, with the triple header in English Championship on Monday. Three cracking games live on the telly. Leicester City with the early kickoff at home in Norwich. Um, a bit of a banana skin, Adam, but the you know despite the Canaries taking the lead, Leicester came through and Jamie Vardy off the bench yet again. Thirty seven, he just it looks like a looks like he's still in his prime. I absolutely love Jamie Vardy. I think I think everyone's the same. You, unless I don't know, you're a you're a fan who's been stung by one of his many goals from over the years. Then um, he seems to be one of the most universally loved players um, down in England, despite the fact he's got. Can we swear on this? Yeah. N- yeah, numerous like highlight reels of him just being a shit house like for, forever. But absolutely love Jamie Vardy. Crazy games ac- across the board. I mean, who, who would have thought if you said a few months ago, Ipswich Town are going to be top of the league? Kieran McKenna's doing a fantastic job there. Um, Southampton pretty much taken out of it at, at the weekend. Um, but yes, three horse race as we have in both of the top two tiers in England should be really interesting. Yeah, and obviously, John, you know, starting with the early game, obviously Leicester. They've, they've obviously they started a barnstorming start in the league and they've kind of fell away in recent times but how vital a win was that obviously you know they were, they were leading 2-1 and then Vardy gets the third goal in the in injury time kind of thing so mm. you know how vital can that be for Mareska's side in the final push six games to go well if you look at Leicester uh, you obviously since their, their movement downwards from the, the Premier League uh, it's been a wee bit tricky for them you know I, I think it's uh, been a tough ride for them but certainly that that result is is massive um, I do think that they've got ambitions to, to go up there as soon as possible um, and obviously compete in the Premier League but um, yeah absolutely massive and um, yeah I, I, like Adam said Vardy fun sport just top top player and I think he will always score you know it's almost yeah. like this guy that just turns up and I think he arrived at football at age 25 or something like that. And then, he's been a bit of a journeyman, uh, he, like he's, he's been through Do you the think leaks. that's why he's still so good now? Because it was so late before he... <laughs> probably, <laughs> he was, yeah, he'd probably still be playing but another he was, three he was or four years. Really, he was really quick, so I thought, like, oh, when he gets yeah. older, he's going to be hopeless because he's re- like relied on his pace, getting him behind. But oh, he's, he's, a, he's a bagsman and he just looks like he's never, ever going to lose it. As I say, like, you know, Jamie Vardy, obviously a massive part of the Leicester kind of juggernaut this season, but Dewsbury Hall as well, you know, I... I probably a teenager compared to Jamie Vardy you know and even at 25 like he's he's been probably been Leicester City's main man as well in terms of he obviously scored in uh, in Monday as well again it's 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 one of the ones where like you, you look at Leicester and um this season it's, it's been it's come see come sa as it were but I, I think it's uh, a you know I've been quite impressed um with, with especially that result um a couple of games at the beginning of the year, were well, pretty good as well, but um, aye, it's, it's it's looking it's looking a bit more positive for them. Yeah, and obviously, Adam, you mentioned Kieran McKenna, what a job he's doing. Uh, Switch, you know, who would have thought that, that they would have been top of the league? Obviously, you know, there's all I think there's only three points separating the, the three of them, and obviously Leicester's got a game in hand, and even if Leicester win that game in hand, it's still only. Three points separating the three of them. Obviously, Southampton have fell away now, and mm. their best chance is the playoffs. But just in terms of Ipswich, obviously, 
you know, who's who's kind of stood out for you from that team kind of thing? Oh, the gaffer. You got, you, 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 like, the way that they've been playing, I think every, everyone's talking about Kieran McKenna. Um, for me, the, the manager is, is what you've got to speak about here. Uh, was it Manchester United before with Darren Fletcher? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. Um, they've been amazing. Although we've been kind of talking up Leicester here, let's be honest, they've chucked it. Like, they were, they were doing fantastically well earlier in the season and have total, totally chucked it. Um, I still think they'll go up as title winners. But I would love it if, if Ipswich Town were to go up. I don't know. I'm putting you in the spot with stats I think, here, but when, when, was the, when was the last time they were in the Premier League? I have no oh, idea. It would, been, it would have been early, early 2000s. Before I, think, I was probably, born. Probably, yeah. 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 <laughs> make, make me feel a bit older there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, as I say, like that's the thing with, with teams like Ipswich. You, you want to see a wee bit of difference. Obviously, Luton in the Premier mm. League as well. They, they looked like they were going to be the Whitten boys. They've really turned their form around in and over in the, the wrong end of the table. But the, you feel as if we, with teams like Luton and Ipswich, if they come up, it's more about you really need to go in and buy quality mm. kind of thing. You, you look at the likes of Norwich as well. I mean, it, it, it's, it wasn't so long ago we were having Norwich go down, Norwich come up, Norwich go down, Norwich come up. So for Ipswich to take that sort of reign as is, being a top rival is you know, quite something. And I think uh, the Bragg Knights probably will go to Ipswich at the end of the season. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I suppose there won't be where are you at Norwich anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <the only> thing. <laughs> and I think when you look at when you look at that game, I mean it was a fantastic game of football. Obviously, the the live kick off at half five, and Southampton looked like they were coasting mm. a two one victory. Then the the sending off, um, Ipswich get the equaliser. And what about uh, Stuart Armstrong's pass though? Oh, fantastic! He's, fantastic. he's you, you see him even <laughs> with Scotland, and he's still got it. Do you know I mean, like he's just I a saw class him, player. I saw him in the airport a few months ago, and it was kind of a bit of a, a running joke that Stuart Armstrong's a bit of a handsome bastard. Yeah. I saw him up close to the first time. I was like, <laughs> wow! <laughs> 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 like he's a fantastic looking guy. Fantastic. He, he does have beautiful hair. I have to. Uh, I, I'm so, jealous. I'm like, like, <laughs> Aye, although I have to see Adam see that that time that Scotland game where I think he. He, 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 don't mention England. Don't, sorry. Don't, don't, sorry. Don't, don't, don't I'm it. sorry, right? But again, I'm uh, like, right. Just put it up the park. Just do something bizarre. For it. Cut it out for a. Just, he can. He can actually shift it left there as well. Like, <sighs> oh, he, yeah. he could have kicked there was, it as the car park for uh, a week uh, like, <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a it's a raining memory. Um, unfortunately, but as I say, uh, yeah, he's some man, some hair, uh, yeah. and uh, I does a job, man. And obviously, when when they get the winner in the ninety seventh minute, I can remember. I was watching the ball go in and the boy slips and then just he somehow just composes himself it's a touch to set it up and then puts it in the bottom corner and when you talk about limbs at football games you know you look at teams like Man City who are maybe a wee bit more spoiled um, and their fan base and kind of thing and they don't really celebrate goals as much as possible but when you see teams like Ipswich winning in the 97th minute to go top of the league, it was literally limbs. Yeah, the championship's good for that. Um, yeah. And I think top top flight English football, specifically the top six, has um, probably been gentrified. Um, and I, th I think the, the the fans aren't quite the same, but the, the championship, Ipswich, and uh, among many others, if you remember uh, the Leeds goal earlier this season, you had that kind of angle, the, uh, the volley, I can't, I can't remember who it was against. Um, but it was on the on the weed socials, and the, the limbs at that game incredible. So championship, you can always always rely that's, on that league for. Yeah, that's the thing. I think when when you look at the Leeds went into the late kickoff, obviously against Hull City, who who had obviously harboured their own hopes of of getting into the playoffs. So I think there's six points off the pace now, obviously with that defeat and the other teams winning, but. You know, Dan James in the last last minute to wrap it up. <laughs> his disappointment. He's he would have been massively disappointed last week at, at missing a penalty yeah. for Wales. But to to get that goal, how how much do you think that that does to a player? How to, to just to lift his spirits of you know right that's gone. Mm -hmm. Let's let's focus yeah. on going into Premier League again. Yeah, and obviously again talking about Wales. I mean, it was a disappointment for Wales to to not actually make the Euros playoffs, you know, it was actually pretty, pretty gutting when I seen it. Um I actually really wanted Wales to get there, you know, I was I was gutted. But um yeah that that again he has to bounce back quickly. He's done that. Um and uh yeah it, it's important for him to just continue that form and just make sure you, you score these these important goals. Yeah and I think when you look at it it's, it's even tight at the bottom. I mean I can't believe Plymouth mm. are down there with, with the likes of Ryan Hardy. He's he seems to have been on fire this year year and yet 
you know, they're, they're down there fighting for their lives. It's it's one of the leagues, obviously, Adam, as you say, it's, it's a cutthroat league. Anybody can be anybody and anybody can be down there. Blackburn looked as if they could be promotion chasers not so long ago and now they're, they're down at the wrong end of the table as well. I mean, obviously, Rotherham are gone. There's, the, you know, I think they're 18 points behind, 18 points left to play. But do you see the, the, the bottom of the table changing as is kind Aye, of thing? No, it, it'll, change, of... it'll change between now and, the, I don't know when this is going out, but it'll, it'll change <laughs> between the next game weekend and the game week after that is the, the league is chaotic, one of the most chaotic in the world. And all oh, that format when you've got 24 teams all of, of similar level, it's the same in League One, it's the same in League Two. If you look at... Uh, League One, big shout out to Lincoln City, 15 games unbeaten, who were struggling and now they're in the, the playoff position. One of my good friends, Conor McGrandles, is playing there for Lincoln City, injured just now, but big shout out to uh, to Conor, they're on a fantastic run, always check out um, for their scores. But that's just, you know, that's a, a symptom of, of any team in good form in, in, in any of the kind of lower divisions in England, particularly in the EFL, that two, three, four wins in a row and your season is turned on its head. Yeah, so... Firstly, John, who do you see is getting the top two places then in that championship? I think Ipswich is going to be there. Um, I think they've been excellent this year. Uh, and I don't know who's going to be second. Do you know that? It's that tight. It's mm-hmm. that close. Um, I mean, who do you think? I, I do think Ipswich will win it and Leeds will be second. I think Leicester will fall away again. I, no, I, I think Leicester will, will win the league. I know they've struggled recently and they've, they've chucked I think Leicester will win the league and the romantic in me is going to say that Ipswich will go up with them um, and Southampton's got a couple of Scottish internationals so we'll go, we'll go Southampton to win the playoffs then <laughs> definitely as long as it's no Sunderland I'm a Newcastle fan <laughs> for my sins and obviously that's where we're going to start in the English Premier League um, Tuesday night St James's Park under the lights an amazing game on Saturday it had to be said against West Ham 3-1 down, back to 4-3 in the last minute. I was, you would have thought I was at St. James's Park. I was watching <laughs> it. I was waving my Newcastle Aye. scarf about. Um, Alexander Isak has been prolific. I think it's 20 goals now for the season. I, I'm struggling to remember a Newcastle player, probably Shearer it would have been, mm. that scored that many goals in a season for, for Newcastle. CC or Bar not hit 20 at any point? No. I think both of them kind of hit. There are thereabouts. Double figures, yeah, but I don't yeah. think it was near 20. I don't think it was... Because I think both of them kind of had separate spells at mm. separate stages of the season. Like, I think from the first half of the season, it was Ba, and then Cissé came in in January, and, yeah. and he'd done it. But <clears throat> what what's your thoughts on Eddie Howe in terms of how he's done at the club this season? I, for me, I, I think he's been, he's been a revelation. You know, I, I do think that Newcastle have been in the position where... They've had the the takeover. They've had a, maybe a, a year or two of embedding with Eddie Howe, and um, the players look as if they're hungry. Uh, and I like that against West Ham. It was just a kind of never die attitude. Um, it's at James's Park. They just went for it. And uh, when I watched the the second half, especially um, the aggression the Newcastle players had, it was just it was rampant. And again, they've all got an eye for a goal. Um, I was I was I, when I seen the highlights, I thought, is that Newcastle? And then. They were actually just bombardment scoring, like, and again, it could have been easy for them to just chuck it against West Ham. Yeah. Uh, but fair play to them. Like it was, uh, it's, it's been the story of the season. Hopefully that uh, Newcastle can maybe continue that form because they are a big club, and uh, you, you'd hope they they take the message of Eddie Howe. You know, he's um, he's a top manager, and uh, I think it's uh, it's going to look look good at the end of the season. Yeah. Do you think Adam that there's do you think there's a problem? I know Joe Cole was saying in commentary that there seems to have been a problem with it, it would maybe investigate more into the, the injury side of things. This is no so much the suspensions because that's just bad luck on Newcastle's part. But I mean, it was crazy on Saturday in particular that I think, you know, Emil Craft got subbed on, then had to get subbed off because. Lascelles went down he's out for nine months I can't believe Lascelles Al- tried to play on him Al- 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 <laughs> came on for another two minutes there's no way he's fit <laughs> Almiron came on mm. went off after five minutes Aye. with a knee injury and uh, obviously Tino Livermento turned his ankle after the ball hitting him um, do you think there's a do you think there's more to do behind the scenes do you think there's a problem with no, training no, or no, no, science no, no, no. These, no, these top clubs have got top professionals working in every department it's particularly 
um, in the medical field they are leading industry professionals I don't think I don't know what the situation is at Newcastle haven't been in at the club but know that I'm sure they're all in good hands I wouldn't think it's anything like that I do think however the demands of modern day football are greater than there have ever been there are more matches than there have ever been and I think you've seen the evidence of that in a number of clubs reporting record injury numbers year on year and I think that's taken its toll on the players so I wouldn't say it's an issue um, internally at Newcastle but I would say it's more an issue that everyone in world football is suffering from because of the increased number of games and increased pressure on the players. Yeah, and obviously, you know, I just, I mean, I, I was actually laughing on Saturday because I, I genuinely thought, why can we not get a break? Why can, <laughs> you know, it's, it's. I believe, I've been... What do you mean, can you not get a break? Yeah. the three I, ones out and one yeah. fourth. Well, it's, it's, well, it's, well, Jared Bowden, I thought... A break, you know, the two dodgy I, penalties, what about that I, as well? Well, <laughs> I thought Jared Bowden would have scored like five at that point. You know, like, before I, I thought, I mean, obviously we're going to talk about David Moyes later on, um, but, you know, I just I just thought it was, it was crazy that players were just dropping like flies and I'm like, what more can go wrong at this club this season? We've finally, the fans have finally got what they wanted. They've got their club back. They've got owners that now care. They've got mm. owners that have pumped money into the club. And because of financial fair play, we've got to be careful what we're doing. We've got to sell players and to bring players in, which which feels a wee bit un, unfair. As Man City and Chelsea were kind of mm. um, running, the, running the show for years. But in terms of just obviously like, as, as you say, like the penalties, I thought Stonewall penalties. I'm no, not the I'm no wearing one. my black and white glasses. But <laughs> no, 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 I think no. the right, second the, one's the, unlucky. No, the, 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 the second one I've got a real problem with, okay, because, I mean, Gordon goes to stick his foot in front not to protect the ball, but to win a penalty. He does it because mm. he can't, he, from where he is, he comes from behind him, he can't protect the ball there. If he's not taken out, he's not protecting the ball because he's, his body isn't on the same side of his leg. His leg comes across, I mean, and that he's come from the blind side and his leg is there to take the contact to win a penalty, not to protect the ball. That's why I think it's different to the first one. The first one, Anthony Gordon, I believe, is protecting the ball before he's fouled. Second one, I don't think that's a penalty kick. If that, See, was, I, if that was given against me when I was playing, I'd be raging. I would, I would have thought the first one would have been less of a penalty no, no, no. because I felt like mm. he then he, he put his leg out more Mm. To, to get in front I think it's, I think it's the side he comes from though he, he's, he's not really yeah, probably he's coming, coming from the blind yeah. it's the blind side on the second one which yeah. is why I, I it just would happen to Kelvin Phillips but wouldn't it it's, <laughs> it's, just, it's just the boy's luck <laughs> but, nightmare start for but him. obviously yeah. you know we couldn't hold on against Everton uh, Paul Dummett thinks he's in WWE <laughs> starts wrestling <laughs> Ashley Young on the ground and oh. when I seen it at first or when, when I heard it was a, a possible check mm. and I was like nah, no chance no chance I seen that I was like, I felt like crying, honestly, cause, <laughs> oh. because it was so late as well. Mm. And then obviously Everton could have won it. But I, it's hard to criticise the team when when they've been playing the way we've been playing under the circumstances, like obviously injuries kind of thing. But obviously, like, you know, a point's a point and we move on kind of thing. Mm. Um, massive win for Forest at the opposite end of the table. Obviously, they, they came out the blocks flying against Fulham. Goals from hudson Adoy. Chris Wood and um, who else was it it was Morgan Gibbs White do you think Notch Forest the way they've got their team do you think it's almost like they've filled it with Premier League players that were great in the past and it's almost like it's just that experience mm -hmm. rather than quality of 40, 50, 60 million I don't know players. if they've maybe got a little bit of a of a lift if there's been some sort of siege mentality created when they were, they were docked the points um, just a few weeks ago, I don't know if that's maybe given them a little bit of a lift, and that the players are maybe feeling hard done by, and you know that kind of if you get the feeling that everyone's out to to get you, yeah, that you, like want, to, you want, yeah, yeah, the yeah same yeah, happens to, to Ever Everton yeah. when 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 they lost initially ten points earlier in the season, mm. that you you do get that reaction, and you know it's people in the club saying like right, nobody likes us, they're out to get us, let's create this mentality that we'll go and prove everyone wrong. Mm. I think maybe a, a that's maybe something to do with it. This little mini resurgence and the result of the weekend for Forest. Yeah, and do, do you see midweek? Sorry, not the weekend. <laughs> do, you, do you see them staying up, John? We the, what, the games obviously where are they left sitting just now. I think they're just outside the just outside the yeah, and relegation. Just, a, just above, but them. it's really really tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's really tight down there. Uh, again, like uh, Luton, and then obviously who else is down there at the bottom? Aye, Forest, Everton, Burnley. Burnley, aye. So. When I seen, I've seen Forrest's result and I was like, that's, 
a positive result, probably pushing just to to get out of it. Uh, Adam said, you know that that um, you know <laughs> uh, deduction, I suppose, or that uh, impetus to to try and get out of the relegation zone is is clearly there. Um, however many games are left, uh, you can expect them fighting at all costs, you know, to try and get out of it. Um, it's just it's just really tight down there. Um, hard to predict who's going down. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to probably go to near the last day, like it's like the, the title way. race kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Ange Postecoglou shared his spoils <laughs> in the London derby. He was joking that they he wanted to control these players with a joystick because it was just bad movement, oh. poor passing. Um, you know, West Ham could have been out of sight. Mm. In all honesty, even though Brennan Johnson takes the lead and oh, yeah. he's Adam, he's he's been in, in, uh, instrumental for for Ange, obviously yeah. at, at Tottenham. I think. Uh, Tottenham and Aston Villa just now are trying their hardest not to get into the Champions League because the amount of points I, both teams are, are are dropping at the minute. Yeah, Brennan Brennan Johnson's been great for for Tottenham. And it's it's been a good season. Whether they finish fourth or fifth, yeah. I, don't, I can't see them. Can't see United catching either Spurs or Aston Villa. It's been a really strong first season as Tottenham Hotspur manager from from Ange Postecoglou, and I think. Next summer, when he's able to take the team on um, another level, I, th I think they'll be in the Champions League next season, if not already this season. And obviously, I'm still not quite over Angelo and Celtic. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, um, but I'm, I'm, mate, I'm delighted. To, I'm delighted to see him doing so well and, and getting the recognition he deserves. I think mm. actually Daniel Levy probably didn't back him enough. He probably didn't trust him enough mm. at the start of the season because obviously they went out and paid big for James Madison and. Had he been fit for the full season, they probably would have been out of sight in that Champions League spot. But do you think if he backs him in the summer, can you see Spurs going even better next season? So actually, do you know, it's one of the ones that's, I'm not saying it's quite hard to tell, but Ange Postecoglou is a man that loves his attacking style of football. he done it at Celtic. Um, he done it in Japan. he done it in Australia. Um, it's all about attack. And again, you look how... It, Early, the goals are being scored in, in his games, and I'm thinking to myself, right, how's he going to defend? And again, um, it's it is exciting football. It's exciting brand. I absolutely love it. Uh, has Ange got the, I suppose the the back and the financial back? I think I think he probably will. I think he'll get it. Um, I think Spurs fans have probably had an exciting season um, that they've probably not had in such a long time because they've been used to. Like your Jose Mourinho's in the past, and um, who else has been there? I said defensive, Cons Conte, Aye, Conte, and defensive and yeah. all sort of um, a lot of obsession based stuff. Whereas Ange is, as we know, is all out attack. Um, so it's exciting for Spurs, um, and yeah, again, it's 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 going to be one where Ange is um, is needing to be backed because again, um, he does know his stuff. He's very 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 shrewd um, in attack and. Uh, I, I really, really like Ange and um, I wish him all the best, but I'm gutted. I, was, I just um, want him so back. I, I know. <laughs> here's, I know. Here's one for you, right? Uh, I was having this argument with a, a friend of mine that's a Spurs fan. If Ange Postacoglu is offered the Liverpool job in the summer, does he go? I think he absolutely does. I, I think Spurs fans are incredibly naive if they think he doesn't. I don't think he will, just because I think he might give it another year and see what he Is that not what you thought when he was leaving Tottenham? Celtic? Well... I thought he was going to get backed in the summer and clearly he wasn't. And I think we've seen that with Brendan Rodgers. I think he's not been backed heavily enough. So I could actually see Deserbi getting a job. Somebody like Liverpool Deserbi. job, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. somebody I like thought him. Alonso was going to be a stick on until the news this week. Yeah, I'm very surprised at that from from Alonso. I thought he would Because have, it, he could would have go, it could go horribly wrong for Alonso next year at, at Leverkusen. So mm. is it a case of, as, you, as you're obviously trying to point out, is it a case of go where your stock's high? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, all, the top managers forever, have, yeah. especially without volatile modern day football management, is like if you're right, if your stock's high, you've, you've got to move on, which is why I think like if the offer comes in to be Liverpool manager. I, think it, I, I don't yeah. think it will. I don't think it will because no. it, Spurs would demand like very high compensation to sell to a Premier League rival. Um, but if he's offered that job, I think he'd be silly not to take it. I think it will be tough if he's offered it because obviously he's got his connections to Liverpool. He's a Liverpool fan yeah. and things like that. But I don't see him moving just yet. I think he will give it another year. He'll obviously talk to, to the board in the summer and, and discuss what the plans are for next season, how to improve that squad because I don't think they're a million miles away for going one better and 
you know, starting to challenge for the title. I mean, we've seen Aston Villa, you know, they, they were challenging at the top for long enough. I, I kind of, I'm not saying I disagree, but I think that with regards to Ange, I mean, I looked at one of the videos and it was the Tottenham players coming back into the dressing room. I think it may have been half time or full time, but I don't know. For some reason, they obviously looked completely disheartened, disappointed with the draw, of course. But I thought to myself, I thought, does he have the right players in and how much, how many players is he going to need in the summer to, I suppose, make his team bulletproof, you know, yeah. defensively and in attack? Because, um, you, know, you know, who knows, he could actually get players from Celtic or whatever, buy them in, you know, Rio Atati might move down south. We, we don't know this, this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I, I think it's a, uh, it, it's exciting for, for Spurs anyway. That That's the sort of main thing. And um, he is a top, top manager. Yeah, and obviously mentioned David Moyes there. Great job he's doing at West Ham. Some of the West Ham fans don't seem to think mental. so. Mental. Oh, mental. Is it self entitlement? With a lot of injury, like? No, it's just stupidity. Yeah. Like, uh, they're, what are they, sixth, seventh in yeah, the league? They've the won league. their first ever European trophy last season. They have, they've, in my opinion, have three of the best players in the Premier League in their current squad. And I think from where West Ham were when David Moyes took over at the beginning of a second spell, it's night and day. Um, I think you'd be closer to be building a statue of David Moyes outside the Olympic Stadium than you would be a sacking him. Ridiculous, I think. Yeah, I think. One of my European trophy. Is that, that's what I'm saying. That? This is what's crazy. <laughs> but it's not, it's, how many times do you see, oh, right, so you've got the example of uh, Di Matteo wins the Champions League and then they're struggling in the league and, and you get five you can't, games you, and you gets can't a even sack. use that excuse. He's not struggle, struggling in the league. They're going to they, they're gonna qualify for perhaps a one greater yeah. competition in which they qualified before if they get a uh, sixth position, which I think they still they still might. Um, they're still in the, the Europa League this season mm -hmm. as well. It's just, to me, men mental that anyone I, I is suggesting he should be the manager. You know, it, when you look at it, I think they've reached the quarterfinal of Europe for the last three years, <laughs> which is crazy for a club <laughs> like West Ham. And it's almost like the way Brighton have went, the, Bright the stock... And Brighton's name has has risen dramatically. Ah, it's all it's all it's years. all PR. If uh, <laughs> it's like R Roberto De Zerbi, it's a you know fantastic coach, and Brighton play some brilliant stuff. But David Moyes, especially in England, is going to be haunted by that Manchester United spell everywhere he goes, and it almost because he's so experienced, almost I think goes against them because in England they're always looking for the newest, the shiniest new toy. But he is a fantastic manager and his results and his CV speak for themselves. And uh, any West Ham fan, any true West Ham fan that thinks he shouldn't be the manager needs their head checked. Do you think he'll walk at the end of the season? He's obviously hinted at that. Yeah, well, he's been off, offered a new deal that he hasn't signed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I I think the way some of the fans treat him, I wouldn't, wouldn't blame him if he did. David Moyes at this stage in his life doesn't need the money. Um if he goes, we are, and we end up having a disastrous Euros campaign, and Steve Clark chucks it, and he can come in as the next Scotland manager. That that could that could <laughs> definitely be a shout. But we're going to win the Euros, so it's fine. I know it's funny. <laughs> we, we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, yeah it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you going to the Euros? I was meant to be, and then yeah. I changed job. <laughs> no, no. One one of my mates is going, uh, but he's not going to attack it. He's just going. He's going to three the cities and just. <laughs> hoping for the best but I don't think he's balling on it either, either. just turn up and enjoying Germany enjoying the sights and well I'm, I'm the same I've, I've, I've managed to get flights out there um, obviously not got accommodation but not got a ticket for any of the games I'm just mm. going to travel about different fan zones and, and sample the atmosphere because I missed the, I missed the last one mm. um, obviously the only game we had away was, was down at Wembley kind of thing but yeah oh, exciting exciting summer it's just mm. unlike us to be Qualifying for tournaments so easily. I know. Um, obviously, big wins for City and Arsenal as well. We're obviously Liverpool playing tonight against Sheffield United. Phil Foden, masterclass <sighs> again last night. Hat trick. You know how 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 good is a player is is he really, John? He's he's incredible. His his footballs his footballs unbelievable, and um, I love the fact that he can, he's he's got goals in him as well. Um, for such a young young player. He's, he's done quite a lot in his career. Uh, and uh, yes, I mean, as I say, City have just, they've just kind of, they've got to that position in the league where I think they've got it in them to win the league, but it's just got to be, 
um, players showing up like your Phil Foden's, um, like your Haaland's. Again, Haaland's a player that we could talk about, but I think there was a video of Haaland. I don't know if you know about it, guys, but it was like a video of like a passing drill. And I don't know if Haaland's came under a wee bit of criticism about his, um, his passing and mm-hmm. his, his actual technical ability. He can score goals, he can bully players off the ball, but does he have the same passing finesse as the other players, would you think, Adam? I think it's clear he doesn't, but that, that's that's not his job. His job's to score goals, and he and he scores plenty. So yeah, for for me, not everyone can be the perfect footballer. Phil Foden it doesn't run as fast as Erling Haaland. It's every, everyone has different attributes, and uh, yes, Erling Haaland isn't the complete f- footballer, but nobody is. Yeah, I think you could run out of fingers and toes to count Haaland's goals last season. Aye. He absolutely ripped up that. I can't believe he was dropped for last night though. Oh, it's crazy. Did you see, <laughs> Sorry, did you see his miss? That. Did you see his miss in the, at the weekend? I actually yeah, didn't. No, I, no, I didn't. I didn't see it. It was, you, you genuinely have to go and that? watch this. You, you would not believe that Haaland would miss this. Pep's crazy though, isn't he? That's like, it's a, yeah. a game against Aston Villa who are fourth in the table. Yeah. You're in a title race. <laughs> De Bruyne, Haaland, bench. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I'm like, imagine being able to do that. Mental. It was actually after, after the second goal, I was watching the game with my brother. And Foden, a brilliant, brilliant second goal. And he goes, he runs off to celebrate. And he's greeted by three subs and sub bibs. <laughs> Erling Haaland, Kevin De Bruyne and John Stones. Imagine having that luxury. <laughs> and the three the three players on your bench warming up when you're scoring goals. That's, that's incredible. And as you say, like Pep's that, that kind of guy that he'll, he'll do something like that. Mm. Obviously, they're fighting in three fronts still. We could do a double treble. Mm. Um, do you think that's a possibility? Obviously, you know, Champions League, FA Cup and... In Premier League, hundred percent. I think City are City are a team that can turn it on, and they've done it year on year. Mm-hmm. Where there's been a title race, and they've managed to to um, come up trumps. And even as well, I've seen little things like even at the weekend, Pep Guardiola talking to Jack Grealish in front of uh, like the, the fans and the TV cameras outside on the park. Jack Grealish is looking, and he's taking the criticism or whatever. And um, he was asked why why are you doing this, and he said, "Well, this is." Regardless, they would need to know this. You know, they, they're the players that need to um, show up towards the end of the season. Jack Grealish again, maybe didn't have the best game at the weekend, but mm-hmm. um, but he, he is a top top player. Uh, Pep Guardiola, he knows how to win titles. He knows how to win Champions Leagues. Uh, I couldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if they went and done a similar thing here. Um, Arsenal, I don't know if they're going to run away with it, but who knows? It's, it's so tight up there. It's that is, it's so incredible. Like Gab is trying to dissect it a couple of weeks ago and I was like Arsenal are banging goals in left right and centre City are in full flow now they've got their players back and Liverpool just seem to have I think Liverpool seem to have that wee bit of luck like they'll, they'll work for 90 they always plus win, minutes they always win but by they one always goal, seem they? to get mm-hmm. that goal and even though they've got youngsters like Connor Bradley and things like that you know they just they seem to like take a duck to water do you know what I mean like, especially Bradley obviously scored at, at, at Hamden you know, he's he's been a player that's... It doesn't look as if he's a youngster, as, as young as he is. Yeah, well, I, I don't think you can call it between the three teams. It is so tight. I think City probably have the easiest running for the final, you know, seven or eight games uh, that are still to play. The banana skin for them could be Tottenham away. They hate going to that new ground. <laughs> They've really, really struggled there, particularly in the league. Um, so that could that could be tough for them, uh, but they've all all three teams have played each other twice now. Each so there's no more points to be taken. Is that right? The, yeah. There's there's yeah. yeah. They can't take points off each other. Yeah. So no. it, it, it's all their own titles to lose from here on in. And I think Brighton are going to have a massive say in proceedings because obviously, I think is it still, Arsenal, still Arsenal to go to Brighton on Saturday night. They still have to play Liverpool five. as well. At some yeah, point. still yeah, to play yeah, Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Liverpool play Man United at the weekend at Old Trafford and if anything of the last game, you know, that Has there ever been a three, tracker. a kind of three horse title race that's been as tight as this for such a sustained period of time? Probably, I mean, you, you know, you would look back to maybe early 2000s again, probably like, like so Arsenal, Man U, Liverpool, that sort of thing. Yeah. But I don't think it's been I can't, as tight yeah, as this. I, I can't, I I can't think, think of an example. I mean, there's been <clears throat> some brilliant title races with two sides, but I can't think of one where there's been three teams at the level that, that we have now separated by as, as little points as we have just now. Yeah, and obviously Arsenal, you know, still fighting fighting away in, in Europe. Mm. Defeated Porto in the last round. Does, 
does that have an effect? I know obviously Liverpool are still in Europe, so all three are still in Europe. Does does Europe have a massive effect, Adam, on on teams like this? I know massive squads and things. Uh, like every, that, every, every I mean every player you speak to about this will tell you they just want to keep playing games, but importantly want to keep winning games. And you see the momentum that City were able to take in to their run in last season from competing on all f- three fr- fronts and you know being able to win the the, the, the treble. I think players just want to be playing football and I mean nobody wants to be waiting all week for the next Saturday and just constantly going over the same things and training they get that buzz um, which this is why I think that Man City will do so well is the point I made earlier about how strong the bench was is I think when all three teams are playing two games a week from now to the end of the season if there are to be injuries and suspensions that catch up on them I think City have the largest squad with the 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 largest amount of, of quality players and depth for them, which is why I think City probably will go on and win the league. And I think when you look at Arsenal, obviously, they are playing Luton last night at the Emirates and last time out, they they got a last-minute winner for uh, through Declan Rice and a 4-3 win for Luton. They, they almost held on. Luton last night was a wee bit more comfortable, a wee bit more mm. easy for Arsenal. Do you see Mikel Arteta, obviously... You know, when you look at last season, how they lost the title, they just kind of fell away. Do you think they're a wee bit stronger mentally and physically this this season? I think they have improved. I think I think it's it's been a um, it's been an exciting season for Arsenal as well. It's been you know really really good solid performances most of the time, um, and again that's why the the top I think they're top. So it's um, I, I think and even as well you're getting goals. From them, you know, Saka again. It's been class. It's been uh, good quality goals, and it's Arteta's making his team um, an, an unstoppable force. It's just the mentality towards the end of the season. That's kind of all that matters. I think is uh, if you if you're going to bet or whatever, I would probably say City are going to be the most strong. I think mm-hmm. towards the towards the end of the season. I think it will be, I suppose, between Liverpool and, and City, but. Um, and Arsenal might just slip away just because it's been a while since they've been in that sort of position. But um, yeah, it's a fantastic job I'll tell you. So you're going City, Adam? Yeah. Just? Yeah. I mean, I would like, I would like to see Arsenal win it because they haven't won it in so long. I would like to see Klopp win it in his final season for Liverpool, mm. but I think City will win it. Too many quality players, really, really strong uh, in every position. And hmm. all, yeah, all, all over the pitch, and they've got hmm. an amazing bench. They could, they could create two two teams that could win the English Premier League title, which is why I think they'll definitely do it with one. Yeah, and John. Maybe for me, I think Adam's right there. I think City will probably win it just because of the strength. But I'd like to see Liverpool win it again. Um, I went to school with Andy Robertson. I sat beside him. And, Did you? Yeah. Oh I wow. School, sat beside him and uh, in a few different classes and uh, played football with him once as well and. I get found out <laughs> he is the professional. Uh, How good was he at school? Was he? Like, uh, I, don't, was, I don't mean I, in classes. It, no. I don't mean in maths. I mean at PE. Uh, <laughs> so. I um, well, if football wise, again, he was, he was, um, he was, he was really, really good. I remember one time playing in the, you know, the old ash pitch, yeah, and yeah. he just for whatever reason, like I remember running towards the byline. It was about the halfway line, running towards the sidelines, and I thought I won the ball, and then all I remember is he's just taking the ball and he's ran about twenty yards up the park, and he's got across, and I'm like. Where did the ball go? <laughs> I, I honestly couldn't think quick enough. And he's obviously he's kept going at his um his his talent obviously and uh, done well. Queens Park, Dundee United, Hull City, Liverpool. You just uh, European Cup winners, Premier League winners again. Uh, so I, I'd like to see Andy Robson win it again because obviously the last time he won it was kind of during the, the lockdown season. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, City look pretty strong at this moment in time. I actually think Arsenal will win it. I think they'll they'll mm-hmm. they'll edge it. I haven't heard anyone oh. say that. I think Liverpool... See, I'm of the opposite opinion of... I've never been a fan of Klopp. I think he's been great for the Premier League. I think he's he's been great in his moments and you could probably compile a, a whole season full of interviews and clips and mm. rants and raves. But, nah, for me, I've never been a fan of Klopp. And as much as, as I think Arteta is a wee bit kind of nippy, I just think he probably deserves it. Based on last season, I know they fell away, but I think, and as I say, like, as you say, it's it's good to see a bit of change. You know, City, obviously, when you look at them, how many titles they've won in the last 10 years, and then if you compare that to, like, somebody like in uh, Bundesliga, you know, Bayern Munich won the last 11 titles now, 
and obviously it's, it's going to be Leverkusen this season kind of thing um, but yeah it's just good to see change and I definitely think Arsenal will probably edge it I think they've That'd got be a nice. bit of it mm. nice, yeah. so we're going to go into a quiz guys so oh, you can work go. together so don't worry about it <laughs> um, I'm eventually going to get like the wee boards with the yeah. with the pens and I'm going to oh, not a head to head <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I'm, going to, and I'm going to eventually do no. a head to head but and um, you've got to have AI or some sort, like, <laughs> get about, like under the chair or something. Like. So, I, because the plan was to to do a head to head, and whoever out of between now and end of the season gets yeah. like the highest number of points, then they both come on to do a oh, football podcast, final. and then they face off against. Let's each start the head to head now, then. Let's do it. <laughs> so, question one: Which English n- team are nicknamed the Hatters? Uh, oh. I think it's Luton. Is it? I think it's Luton. I don't know. Must be Luton Town. Correct. There you go. Who did Bournemouth defeat in their Tuesday night clash at the Vitality? Wolves? No. no. Wolves won that game. Get a guess? Nah, I'm not guessing. <laughs> Crystal Palace. Fuck. Sorry. No idea. Um, who opened the scoring for Arsenal last night in their win? Odegaard. 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 Uh, which Scottish international player's nickname is Meatball? John McGinn. Yeah. Um, Phil Foden scored a hat trick last night against Villa, but who opened the scoring for City? Julian Alvarez. No. No. Yeah, Roger. It was Roger. Roger, Roger scored. Yeah. yeah. And question six How many goals does Keogh have against Rangers? Seven. Oh, is it seven? Seven. Seven. Bang yeah. on. Machine. It was a, a 128 year record that um, no player, no Celtic player has got past six against any Rangers side and he broke it obviously yeah. this season I, I know that because I saw uh, that Tony Haggard he was writing an article today mm. about Cel- Celtic's number 8 will get his 8th old firm goal or something like that so hopefully that's where hopefully that's where um, I saw that so as I say that leads us on to a weekly rev- from a weekly review to a weekly preview of the weekend and although the game's on Sunday we're going to start with Rangers v Celtic obviously I mentioned Kyogo Adam is there any doubt about him starting despite Obviously, Ida kind of starting so well at Celtic. I I don't think Kyogo should ever be in, on the bench for a Celtic game. Period. Whether you play Ida with him or if you play Kyogo off him, or uh, I'm sure both players can coexist. Um, but for me, Kyogo has to be first name in, in the team sheet in any Celtic team, given his goal record, particularly in the Old Firm Derby, given the number of goals he has, he has scored. So, yes, for me, Kyogo must start. John, any doubt? No up front. Kyle goes for me. Uh, yeah. Again, he's uh, he knows how to score in these games. Uh, the one of the, the, the best two goals this season. Again, one was at Ibrox. He took on the volley. Second goal was an absolute screamer at Celtic Park. Uh, again, like you know that finish is just top draw. Um, and I think he's he has to start. I think he's the he's the man that if anyone is um, going to make a difference uh, up front. Mm-hmm. I think when you look at it as well, I think the fact that Nicholas Kuhn has came in and despite a shaky start, mm. has has found his feet. Do, do you see it being Kuhn and Maeda I, up front with him? Yeah, I do see that. I think it's, I think it's nice to see Kuhn go a wee bit more direct. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think he was a little bit scared to begin with. Um, he was hanging about the byline, maybe a bit shaky. I think it was conf- confidence probably. Yeah. I, I was mm-hmm. at the game at Easter yeah. Road. Where I thought he was particularly poor that night Yeah. Um, at Easter Road. And I just... Thought he looked like a player who lacked confidence, didn't want to beat his man, and when he did, he was showing too much of of the ball without using his body. And uh, yeah, there's no doubt there's been a, a big improvement the last couple of weeks with him. Yeah, and obviously, you know, when you go when you go to the Rangers side of things, um, Dessers obviously and Sima, you know, Dessers had the majority of the game last week against Hibs. But when you look at the the records this season in the league, Sima ten goals and two assists. Meanwhile, Dessers has thirteen and two uh, this season. I know the Rangers fans would probably would would you think they'd prefer Sima to start? No, 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 no. See Sima was played the first few minutes. Uh sorry, played played the last few minutes of the game last weekend and it was the first time he'd kicked the ball since he got injured uh whilst in international duty during the African Cup of Nations. Um and on top of that, when he was playing for Rangers, he was playing off the left. So I, I would be very, very, very surprised if Sima was to start, let alone start up front. Over Dessers, um, so I think it will be Dessers that, that starts through the middle for Rangers. Yeah, and obviously Fabio Silva, John, um, he's a player that's looked really impressive, and he's and he's shot spells so far in Scottish football. He has, I think he, he, he 
with the ball at his feet, he looks a good player, you know, he can get a good turn on. Uh, and uh, again, he's he has been one of probably out of Rangers kind of squad, been one that has been, I'd say, one of the standouts, maybe obviously. Todd Cantwell um, and again uh, this season Rabi Matondo I think Rabi Matondo's came up with uh, a few goals and I think he's came under a bit of criticism but um, it's, it leads for an interesting game um, I, I don't actually know who's going to win this it's not even as if we've got um, something to say about the squad depths or injuries the Celtic have, have came back and have you know the squad's kind of revitalised a wee bit the first start in 11 Rio Hattati coming back Rangers, meanwhile, have probably have a better squad at the moment. Uh, it's very hard to tell who's going to take glory on Sunday. Yeah, uh, it, is, it is so tight. Um, and I think that's an interesting point you make about Rangers probably having a better overall squad. They probably have um, greater balance and a more settled team. But where I worry for Rangers is in the attack in the third. S Cyril Des was all, albeit has scored 13 league goals this season, but I don't think he is the answer um, and then this sounds ridiculous because he's actually scored more goals than Kyogo but for me Kyogo is is a killer in the final third and I think that that could be the difference between the two sides at the weekend where it is so close if there is to be one chance that goes either way you would you would absolutely bet your house on Kyogo scoring it but with Dessers you win the better fiver I think even talking about the middle of the park I think Lundstrom being in there he's been good yeah there's been, been good, yeah. talk this season of um of the way he plays and how close he's going to get to like your likes of McGregor, your midfield players. Because again, McGregor got free reign um, the last game and the game before that, he got a, he get far too much space. Uh -huh. um, so from a Rangers perspective, they'll be hoping Lundstrom gets a little bit closer to midfield players. And um, but uh, again, we've got players in the Celtic team that are that have been there. They've bought the t-shirt and they've they've won at Ibrox this year. So. It'll be, it'll be a close encounter, definitely. But um, yeah, I don't know if we're going on to predictions or if we're, if we're going to start that. Ah, yeah, we'll probably, we'll probably go on to predictions. <laughs> do, you know what I like? I, do you know what I like? It's a good noise up for these games. Combined 11s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, can start, we can start that. Yeah, go for that. <laughs> right, here we go, John. Uh, uh, Jack Butland has to be the goalkeeper. I, I think Butland. As much as I love Joe Hart, I would say mm. Butland in goals. Mm -hmm. Centre half's probably one of each. Goldson and Carter Vickers. It's, Do you know uh, yeah. what? Based on based on form, I think. So I don't think you can chuck in e scales. It's going to be the well. Yeah, I don't think or, you can chuck in Suter either. To be honest, yeah, so yeah. you can. It's kind of yeah. Car Carter Vickers and Goldson always right, so play well. Yeah, we go, yeah, so go for Carter Vickers. What we say in left back? Greg Taylor. Yeah. Over Barisic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Felders. I think Barisic's uh, record uh, in okay. these games. Yeah, Yelmaz has, has done okay it. for Rangers when okay. uh -huh. uh, when he's played, but I yeah. don't know if he's going to be fit for the weekend. I think yeah. I think he might still be injured. But I would go Greg Taylor left yeah. back. Uh, Tavs, 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 Tavs near right back, definitely. Yeah. Um, midfield, who we think? <sighs> are, are, are we are we including? Is this just players who are going to be fit and playing this game because? Callum, no, McGregor, just, Callum, just, McGregor, Callum McGregor's in there, but is he going to play, the, play this weekend? Uh, he's going to play this weekend, I think. <laughs> Even at 60% fit, I think he'll play. But I think definitely it's got to go in form, I think, I, this season. I, so it's not just like... So we can't start. pick it up? I, I do think that, see, the way that Lundstrom's playing, I think I think he makes it in there. I think mm -hmm. just because it's just the way he picks up the ball and he turns. And, but I, I do think... That if you go forward a little bit, I think O'Reilly is a certainty. You've got yeah. to pick O'Reilly. I think but his he's, goals and his assists. Oh, he's incredible. Um, so what, McGre McGregor, Lundstrom, O'Reilly? I think it's so harsh on Hattati. I really like Rio Hattati, but he's not, is, he's not played this is, season if it's, yet. If it's going in form, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. If, we're, if we're going based on this season in form, then yeah. that's probably what we're saying for front three then. Dyson for me. Oh. I think er earlier in the season, Seema would be in there for, for Rangers. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can include Dessers in this team. I don't can you think include Rabbi Matondo? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy shout. I no. love his speed. I love his speed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he, should, uh, he should have been a sprinter then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. On, I'm kidding. On. He's a good player. Good player. Um, yeah. But no, I don't think he quite makes, makes his team. Probably I go. Um, Let's go with the certainty. Kyo goes to the Kyo go. Yeah. Kyo goes to the absolutely. Um, Seema and Maeda, either side. Yeah, I think that's I think it's a fair shout. Yeah, that's that's a fair team. I think. I think the thing as well is obviously with Celtic 
you know, we brought in Kuhn, but Abada before is, you know, falling off track. Yeah. And then um, Palma again had an okay start of the season and then mm-hmm. sort of drifted off and I don't think he can even get near the team now, maybe. No, um, no. It's even James Forrest, I, I think, think he's, he's going to get a game ahead. <laughs> I think <laughs> he's declared himself fit, Palma. Yeah. Um, but he'll, he'll be on the bench, do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think that's how he's got a Aye, I think that's a fair. I think I'm going to need to write that down and get it up in the socials to see <laughs> what everybody else thinks. But what what do you think, just to finish on the game, what, what do you think Rangers need to do differently defensive-wise that they obviously didn't do the first the first twice? Obviously the first game, you know, under Michael Beale, you know, a lot of Rangers fans will just put that down to... It was, it was coming towards, obviously, the end, his, his tenure kind of thing and... What what kind of needs to change in that defence? Well, I think when you speak about changes defensively, I don't think that really means right in front of Jack Butland or, or mm-hmm. even within the back four. I think it's the way that Rangers set up, set up from, yeah. from 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 when Celtic have have the ball on their their own uh, defensive third. I think Rangers need to be much more in Celtic's faces um, and probably have their line of engagement start ten fifteen yards higher than than what it's been. Um, if Callum McGregor plays, you have to have someone sitting Callum McGregor. You can't, you cannot let him get in the ball. He will, he will kill you. He will rip you, rip you apart with his, with his passing, taking the ball off the centre halves and and you know finding members of Celtic's front three with ease between the lines. So you need to. I think for Rangers, it's about you know it's the Ibrox. The crowd will be right up for it. High press. Um, Strong start. I know it's cliche. Everyone says all the time that you need to start the game well. Of course, it's the simplest thing ever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think if you're changing something defensively, it's pro- probably coming from your front three or four players that have to make that change to really, you know, step that team up 10, 15 yards. Yeah, and obviously, the, you know, the referee will come under massive scrutiny regardless of what happens. Um, you know, John Beaton is going to be the man in the middle. Nick Walsh and VR. Clement has had a go at referees. Brendan Rodgers has been up in front of the SFA because he's rants about referees. Do you think there's going to be any flashpoints no, this, for, for beating to it? This, no, this, thing, this thing about referees is a nonsense. Referees never, ever go onto the pitch trying to have a bad game. It's their job. This is their livelihood. They've trained to be referees for most of their, their adult lives and they pride themselves on making... Uh, good decisions that doesn't always happen but they go against every team and when it happens against the old firm you always hear about it but you, you've, I think Dundee uh, have been shafted earlier in the season on multiple occasions St Mirren have been totally shafted in the second half of the season multiple decisions but you never hear of it because the fans of the old firm shout the loudest so I don't think there's I would hate it if the game is spoiled by people talking about refereeing decisions and conspiracy theories. I mean, that one about Willie Colm and the handball in the last old firm, that it didn't even matter anyway yeah. when uh, Colm was on VR, and you're still talking about it months later because that's the news line. It's referees don't go out to make poor decisions deliberately. They absolutely don't. And even if they have a preference of which team they support, they, I know for a fact that does not influence the way they make decisions. So nonsense if, if if anyone thinks it does and what what i would say to that i know i get a hundred percent agree with you but what i'm talking about is more the pressure side of things because of what's been on in the past the, the, you know does that play on a, a referee's mind when trying to make a a, a big decision obviously vr's there to, to back them up, obviously, if needs be. Yeah, kind of I, so I think I think we've seen a, a few examples, without being overly critical of referees, I think we've seen quite a few examples this season of, of referees almost passing on responsibility to the video assistant referee and almost not making decisions on the pitch because they know that it can be checked in retrospect yeah. uh, by someone away from the ground who has... Who has replays so that that can happen, and oh, there's pressure on referees in, in every game. You're right; it's a it's a, ma- a massive game, um, and the pre- the referees are going to be under incredible scrutiny, uh, scrutiny, and more so if they get they get one wrong. So, I hope it doesn't affect their their, their decision making. But pressure's natural; they're only human. I think, regardless, though, I think there will be talk of the referees on Monday. Put it Absolutely, that way. Yeah. There's no, yeah, there's no, if a, a throw-in goes to one side, goal, yeah, it's it's not, it's Glasgow. Yeah. There's no denying that. I think the again, the referees. Uh, obviously, there only is a certain number of referees that can actually officiate the top-flight games, especially uh-huh. games of that high-profile nature. 
Um, I was looking at it. I, I, I don't know why it never came up in like, all the channels, but I always wondered why it was always kind of the same sort of referees refereeing the uh, Glasgow <laughs> Glasgow Derby old form. I, I just feel as though that it, could there be more referees to to officiate these games? I don't know. Um, yeah, that, I, there's there's only there's only a few that have made it to category one uh -huh. um, officials, and you obviously lost. Uh, a couple of referees this season who have gone into the full time roles within VAR, mm -hmm. so you lose a couple of your top referees there as well. So there's a very small talent pool that have made it to, to Cat One referees, and the demands of of VAR this season as well means that you now need an extra two officials. So you need six officials per match when before you only needed four. Yeah. So the pool the pool was already small, and now it's even smaller for these games. So that's why it's the the, the same guys over and over again. So it'll be in interesting to see next season if we get a few, a few new faces. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, is the pool going to get bigger? Because you always wonder, like, it, obviously, I think, I don't know if that maybe takes it away a little bit and maybe that's why we hear less referees, referee scrutiny down south because there is so many referees that uh -huh. can manage, you know, top flight games. Um, and it's just because always the, the same ones over and over again <laughs> referee these games. So they're constantly looked into and their um you know people tend to do their own homework <laughs> oh, we, we, <laughs> about them we, we all know the, fa the very fact we're even discussing the names here yeah shows like the incredible pressure that these referees are under so why would you want to be one in the first place I, so I, I think that's the issue as to why there's such a small pool nobody yeah, wants to be a referee. I, I feel like i feel like you know referees if you get to referee a, a derby game i think you should get like a week or two in Spain right after it <laughs> just to get away for, all paid for Glasgow for, yeah, yeah. yeah just to get away for Glasgow for a week or two but <laughs> you got to switch um, off at all media outlets yeah, everywhere you go you'd have to go to a pretty remote absolutely. park to be honest yeah <laughs> and then even still somebody might find you <laughs> <laughs> so how do you see the game going in uh, Sunday predictions boy? no no <laughs> no no keep everybody happy yeah. do you know what I mean? no no <laughs> okay I, I, I'll go first I think it it'll probably be a uh, going to say a 2-1 to Celtic uh, I think it'll be uh, uh, again Celtic have proved before that they can they can do it um, you know at Ibrox uh, Rangers have they have they managed to win in such a high pressured game uh, it's it's one of the ones where um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a draw but for Celtic I think it's a, a not lose game yeah. uh, I think a lot of Celtic fans would take a draw I think for Rangers for the, and for the Rangers fans, I think it is a must win. Uh, just in terms of the position they're in the league, um, the fact that they can still go for a treble, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but I'm going to say 2-1 to Celtic, just purely on the fact that with Celtic having players back, Rio Hattati being back in the squad, Carter Vickers uh, securing the defence, um, Kyogo, maybe not in the best form, but he can score in the big games. Um, Kuhn coming out in a game as well and O'Reilly pitching up the goals, I think, are across the park. Celtic uh, look pretty strong. I'm not just saying this is sitting the fence, but I think it will be one all. Um, I think it's more important for both teams to not lose the game than it is for, for either team to go and win the game. Um, I think James Tavernier, massive player for Rangers, I mm -hmm. think he'll score and I think Rangers will go one up. I think... Early in the game, I can see them going one up with the Ibrox crowd getting right behind them. Um, but as I touched on earlier in the podcast, I think the threat of Kyogo up front and his record in this fixture, I think Kyogo's going to have a say. And I think it, if I had a crystal ball and I'm picturing the game now, I can I can see it like Rangers going one up, Tavenier place bouncing, and Kyogo silencing Ibrox as he has done on many occasions before. So one all and then I think that keeps both teams right in the title race going into the to the end of the season and makes that game at Celtic Park next month even bigger. Yeah, I think I would definitely take a draw if you were offering me the now, but I'm I'm more side than you. I think maybe the psychological edge of going into Ibrox top of the league, the fact that Brendan Rodgers has won the first two derbies of the season. Um, well, we're going to struggle is obviously yeah. Part the, part of that actually makes me think that I, I don't think a Rangers team in a title race are going to go a season without winning an old firm game. Mm -hmm. So you would think it, this is probably their best chance. So Absolutely, maybe, maybe yeah. so that that mm -hmm. just purely thinking of it mm -hmm. logically, a Rangers team in a title race won't lose all four. Well, see, not, I think yeah. if if Rangers score first, and you know the stadium's absolutely bouncing, I don't see us coming back and winning again. Think I think it'll be too much for the players without the fans there. I think we'll shrink and and we won't win the game. But so we need to silence the crowd first. I think Celtic need to definitely silence the crowd first and try and get a goal. Um, so obviously 
Elsewhere in the SPFL, massive games for Dundee and Hibs, trying to secure top six football. Um, Motherwell and almost Aberdeen, to a point, are adrift by six points at this stage. Two games left to go. I think I'm right in saying, um, is it Aberdeen that's got Dundee? I think somebody's got, Hibs have got Dundee and then St. Johnson in the, in the last two games. So you can maybe see Hibs getting there. Um, but who else Who else do you think makes up the top six? I'd love, to, I'd love to see Dundee in the top six. I, think, I love Tony Dockery. I think he's a great manager. Uh, I think he's done a fantastic job since taking over with, with Dundee and for a newly promoted side to um, to be in the top six alongside Kilmarnock and St Mirren who also have great managers and Derek McInnes uh, and Stephen Robinson. I think if Dundee are to sneak into that top six and the top six is of course two old firm teams then uh, Hearts with Stephen Naismith, Kelly with uh, Derek McInnes, McInnes, St Mirren with Stephen Robinson and Dundee with Tony Dockery. I think that's the six teams and the six managers that deserve to be there. That's why I hope that's the top six. John, you agree? I, I, th I think, well, I, I th again, it's, it's so close there. Um, but teams like your Aberdeens have fallen apart a little yeah. bit. Your Motherwells as well. Motherwell, Motherwell's a mixed bag. Motherwell can still sneak in there. Um, whether they do or they don't, I'm not too sure. Um, but I, I think Dundee is a shout as long as they suppose sort out of their pitch and their training <laughs> tissues. Yeah, I think I they can. Well, oh, they've got the, game, the game against Motherwell might, <laughs> might actually not go ahead. Um, um, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. They actually said, I think somewhere that I think the game, if it was on right now, it would go ahead. Mm -hmm. But obviously the forecast, I don't know what the forecast is for the weekend. So it's just it's just a case of predicting the weather. I know we can't do that in this podcast. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I, as I say, I, it's one of the ones where it's, it's sort of it's tighter around the middle. Um, and yeah, how many games is it before the split? Uh, just two, two or three, I think. Two, yeah. Yeah, I is think it, right. some teams on 29, some Dundee teams on 30 three. or 31. Dundee, yeah. have, Dundee have three. Dundee have three, right. Yeah, they've, okay, they've so. to play Motherwell and then they've got the rearranged game against Rangers. So I suppose Rangers Dundee's midweek, yeah. the best kind of opportunity, I suppose. I uh -huh. think they, well, they, they're extra oh, games against Rangers, so yeah. it's <laughs> probably, uh, it's yeah. probably yeah. quite tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. okay, so I, I, I don't know. I, I still think that um, if Motherwell if Mother get their get their act together I think that there's a potential they could make it but it is interesting the middle um, of the table um, and it's, it's, and by, by the way talking about Kamarnock I mean I think Kamarnock have done a, a great oh, job yeah. this season he's, you know? he's definitely like, up for manager uh, of the year surely Derek McCann uh, who do you think would be manager of the year oh. John McGlynn for me it's, <laughs> he's definitely in my shout but I just yeah. don't ever see a yeah. A low league manager winning it. Well, I think he's definitely deserved it. It depends which award, because the P the PFA uh -huh. one is um, yeah. voted for by other managers. Um, I just think Falkirk was five, six seasons they've spent in in League One, and they're yeah. inv invincible. It seems like they can never get out of that mm. that division. And if you look at it, yeah, full time team they should win that league on uh -huh. paper. They have the highest budget just because it's taken them so long and how big a club mm. Falkirk are, and to do it undefeated, I think John McGlynn, yeah. I think it, it's it's probably going to be one of the top top flight managers to be honest. Yeah. And it, I mean, as I say, it, it's it's a strange one because people had their their, their votes out, and albeit Celtic's in a title race with Rangers, I seen Clement was top of that list, and I thought if Rodgers wins it, does that mean Clement is not eligible then for manager of the season? But again, it's how well he's done since he's taken over. You know, obviously from Bill. So um, it's strange, isn't yeah. it? Because like, if Celtic were to win the league narrowly. You would still probably say that Clement's had a better season as a manager. Absolutely. If that makes sense. Yeah, mm. just absolutely. From, what I think he inherited. from the shortness of, of time he's came mm. in, kind of thing. Yeah, because if you look at what Rogers inherited and where Celtic are now, mm -hmm. they've regressed. I think it's easy to give yeah. managers of the year to teams from Celtic or managers from Celtic and Rangers, obviously. Yeah. And, and even I think you'd probably expect Hearts to, to finish where they're finishing. So for me, yeah, I'd, I'd probably go with somebody like Derek McInnes. I think he's done a fantastic job yeah. at Kilmarnock, especially in what the cups Stephen kind of thing. No, I just, I just think probably they, expect. Yeah, I just Hearts think expected there. Hearts to be there, mm. kind of thing. Mm. And obviously talking about Falkirk, well done on them winning League One, thumping seven-one victory away to Montrose. The job was done before the game kicked off. Um, Hamilton failed to win. Um, one of the one of three, I think, teams that are still unbeaten this season. Um, PSV and Leverkusen being the only other teams unbeaten which <laughs> is good company to have obviously for, for a team like Falkirk but yeah. do you see Hamilton coming up in that, that playoff place I mean I know obviously I think it's uh, 
you know, you've got Queen's Parker at Inverness possibly finishing second bottom Is of the championship. Yeah, United's pretty close to there as well. I think they're kind of close to the playoff place mm. in the championship and close to the, the drop zone. And I think so <laughs> somewhere in between kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, a bit interesting. Uh, again, like you mentioned there, Hamilton, a, a team that, you know, were in the Premier League for so long and had had surpassed expectations actually being in the Premier League for so long. Um, and again, them going into the Championship and then again in the League One, um, obviously a dis disappointment for the Aki's fans. But uh, I think that uh, there's a there's a possibility, depending on, you don't know on the day, like, mm -hmm. you know, the Aki's could take on anyone. I think years ago they bet, was it Hibs in a playoff Yeah, they beat Hibs in a playoff to, final, to I think, yeah. Is that right? And that's, it was them ever since. Like, Remember them beating Falkirk in a playoff? Aye. Long, long ago, that would have been. I think that was the first year we had the playoffs ever. I remember being at that game. Terrible ground. Are you guys <laughs> a fan of the playoffs? And, and the, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's the good. structure that they are. It's, yeah, we, we all love watching English yeah. playoffs kind of yeah. thing. So it's good that we've got that up here kind of thing. It's quite it's hard. Just, it's quite hard to watch actually at times, like because you think about it, like the players have had such a, a long season and uh -huh. 90 minutes or whatever. Like, again, like that, that's genuinely it. Like, it's just make or break for teams um, it's exciting like it does make a difference it does have that added effect at the end of the season uh, again at least to like the fans being on side you know coming to support their teams um, again I don't think uh, I don't think it's a, a bad thing I think it's probably an exciting thing to have um, albeit a bit heartbreaking if you're on the opposite end of it you know? well you know not mention that was it Ross County or the part of the Fassel Fassel fans Fassel, last yeah. year oh. you know they, they had what chances to put the game out of sight they not like 3-1 up yeah yeah from, from the first, from the first and, and, and then they like scored again and then they lost in penalties yeah, yeah. oh my god I was yeah. uh, that was an incredible game <laughs> um, randomly I was watching it in uh, Florida uh -huh. Of all places, yeah. I just, you know, <laughs> I was watching it. In I was watching it in a pub in Newcastle. <laughs> yeah. I was in Newcastle watching it. Yeah. It was crazy. One of the guys, my work, he was, he's, he's uh, a Pathy Thistle fan, and he was, he was talking about it, and he was saying, "Oh yeah, it's a big, great game going up and all that." And I think in the bus back, I think he was like, <laughs> I think people were texting him. I think he wasn't texting back. He was just like phone down. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible journey back like, down from uh, Dingo. I can just imagine oh. it. Deer antlers and all yeah. that just for a laugh. Like, Ross County. Like, yeah, so as I say, um, that's that's all we've got time for. So thanks, guys, for coming in. It's been a, thanks for a, brilliant, a brilliant episode. So obviously that's all we've got time for. As I said before, if you haven't already done so, get onto YouTube and check out the guys at Let's Have It. Some great content on there. So click subscribe and make sure you don't miss another minute. Um, you can check us out on Spotify uh, and Facebook and X at Added Time Pod. Um, so yeah, from uh, from us next time. Um, see you later, guys. <laughs>